And welcome to the Groundhog Day edition of And They're Off. We'll be giving you a live report from our own Puxatawney stable boy later in the show. As you already know, Zenyatta will be partnered in her first try at motherhood with Bernardini. While Zenyatta has been celebrated near and far for her winning personality, Steve Haskin and I are among those who have gotten to know Bernardini up close and personal as well. Steve, these two great kids should make a wonderful couple, don't you think? <laughs> I don't know, are you speaking from a your romantic standpoint, or you like uh, you like talking Ozzy and Harriet, uh, wonderful couple? You know I'm a romantic, you know, I, I, yes. You are? Okay, well, listen, that's good. I mean, I know a lot of people are, antis are, are anticipating some romantic interlude, but being Zenyatta has her own uh, diary right now, I think someone should prepare her for the fact that she will not be getting flowers. <laughs> Although it could be Valentine's Day, you know? She still won't be getting flowers, or a Valentine. We, uh, Steve, after the uh, Preakness, when Bernardini was moved back to New York, uh, when we were up there for the Belmont Stakes, uh, trainer Tom Albertrani and his staff were unbelievably gracious toward us and uh, let us hang out with Bernardini. Uh, maybe they got more than they bargained for since we were putting in at least an hour a day hanging out with them. But what a neat horse. I mean, we just petted on him and petted on him and talked to him and messed around with him and what a, what a great personality he had speaking of romantic interludes lenny and and lenny and bernardini that's about as romantic an interlude as we had all year <laughs> well he he is by ap <laughs> indy steve so you know yes i know and that's why it's accepted okay well now comes the serious business of naming uh, the resulting full uh, you've seen ads for the Shudini on late night TV, that stick that lets you put your shoes on without bending over. How about Zendini, which lets you get your Zen on more easily, perhaps? Or Queen Dini, or if it's a boy, how about Bernard King, in honor of the great basketball player? Or if the Mosses want to continue with the police motif, how about Sting Dini? Steve, any of those hit you? Oh my God! Yeah, I'm so I'm so glad I left it up to you, by the way, to make a fool of yourself. At least only one of us has. First of all, Bernard King. How many people are going to know who Bernard King is? Yeah, he's a great. I'll player. give you one though. As a Yankee fan, okay, there's a name you should have come up with. It if it's a Philly, Bernie Philliams. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. You like that, huh? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's good stuff. All right, folks, you can try this at home. It's, it's a great uh, board game. <laughs> Sit around with your family and uh, come up with names. All right, Steve, your first Derby Dozen list of three-year-olds has come out. But like Santa, you're a man of many lists. And uh, you have a second list that I think is quite interesting since everybody's on the same horses for their top Derby right now. T tell us about that second list of yours. Well, I decided to try something new, so I've issued a challenge to myself. As we all know, anybody can pick, you know, a top 12. It's going to be mostly the same names, especially a top four with Uncle Mo and Tawana and Serve and Tapazar and now dialed in after his sensational performance in the Holy Bull. But what I've done now is make up a second Derby Dozen of horses that most people don't know, who haven't really proven themselves, might be late developers, but who have the possible potential, if that's redundant, who have the potential <laughs> to become, you know, top horses by the time the Derby rolls around. And I think it'll be interesting to compare the list of the Derby dozen right now to this second Derby dozen and see how these horses stack up against each other come Derby Day. This is my second Derby dozen. Yes. Okay, number one, Casper's Touch. Who's that, you say, right? Well, I've already written a whole column on him. It's a Kenny McPeak horse who I think has the potential to be a very good horse. So keep an eye on him. Number two, Elite Alex. He's already run this year, ran a sensational race in defeat after a horrendous start. And I think he's going to be something special, the son of a fleet Alex. The horse that beat him in that race, Alternation, Donnie Von Hemmel horse, who's got a big kick. I think uh, he's a well-bred horse. Uh, Bob Baffert has got Awesome Patriot, who has not proven himself yet, but who's got a tremendous amount of potential. He's number four. Kenny McPeak's got another horse named Washington's Rules I have in there who just won recently in an off-the-turf allowance race. 
Um, Rick Dutrow's got a horse, not Boys of Tuscanova, but Rustler Hustler that nobody knows about. That could be a nice horse. Followed by Tis Blessed, Sway Away, uh, Macon. Did I pronounce that right? Macon? Machen, yeah. Machen, Machen, that's right. The funny thing is, you, <laughs> you just told me how to pronounce it and I forgot it already. Um, Crossbow, who just won impressively recently, number 11, Beamer, who even though he was beaten badly by Soldat, made a good enough move in, this, in the slop to suggest that he still might be a good horse. And Heron Lake, another Nick Zito horse that was very game in his defeat. So that's, those are my top 12 of my second Derby dozen. And again, come uh, first Saturday in May, it'll be interesting to see how these horses stack up against the main horses. Can we call them the Dirty Dozen? You know, I was thinking about that. They could, listen, eat, both of these lists could turn out to be a dirty dozen. <laughs> all right. and, you know, as, as we all know, half of these horses are not going to make the derby on the main derby dozen list. And what are the chances that one of the horses in the top 12 is actually going to win the derby? So uh, you never know what's going to happen between now and May. So it'll be interesting to compare. That's all. I, I like it. I like it very much. All right. There's just some, some good insight out there. The Sunshine Millions was set up nine years ago as a competition where Florida breds and California breds raced against each other for enhanced purses and bragging rights. There were cheerleaders, there was a point system, race caller Trevor Denman would call, you know, such and such from California's on the lead and such and such from Florida's second. It was kind of a big deal, although it was never much of a competition because the Florida breds always crushed the California breds. The other day, they ran the Sunshine Millions, and the premier race, the Classic, had nine horses in it. All nine of these horses were Florida breds. I, I think the original premise of this day has officially jumped the shark. Uh, I don't know what that says about cow breds or horsemen not wanting to ship for 500,000. But uh, these states both have days devoted to their own state bread, so maybe it's time to look at putting this purse money toward more constructive uses. There's a barn area at Santa Anita that has needed an overhaul for a decade or two. Uh, Gulfstream could use some seats and a small grandstand. So uh, I don't know. I think it's time to maybe take a look at the Sunshine Millions. Anyway, that's my opinion. Steve, you have something to report on the Eclipse Awards. Take that away, please. Well, it's, it's, it's not so much the Eclipse Awards in general. It's just a couple of little facts that I came up with that uh, makes you realize that there's nothing perpetual anymore in racing. That's why we should appreciate what horses like Zenyatta and Goldacover and Gio Ponti um, have done by maintaining their championship form over two or three years. But first off, Eight of the last ten champion three-year-old males did not race at four. Hmm. Eight out of ten. That's pretty sad in a way, don't you think? Yes. Okay. Uh, and what about the horses that did race at four? Well, since Forgo retired in the past 33 years, only two horses, Cigar and Skipaway, have repeated as champion older horse. That's 31 different champion older horses in 33 years. Yeah, I'm not trying to prove any point here. I just found uh, those stats kind of interesting. Yeah. Don't you? <laughs> yeah, well, the, they don't stick around, unfortunately. <laughs> I mean, that 8 out of 10 of the 3-year-olds, that, that is a damning statistic, unfortunately. And, uh, I know. Unfortunately, our boy Bernardini is, uh, is one of those. One eight. of them. Yeah. Yeah, uh, don't get me started uh, on that. Another uh, Eclipse Award note, the... Uh, the Racing Form NTRA Handicapping a Championship ended the other day on January 29th, meaning we now know who will be boring us with a 30-minute speech at next year's awards ceremony. Really, folks, this is an introduction and an attaboy, okay? It's bad enough when the Eclipse Award winners go on for a half hour without having more people do it. Just my opinion. We are now three months out from the Breeders' Cup. December, January, February, it's, it's right on my abacus. Nothing yet from the Kentucky Horse Racing Commission on the Life at 10 investigation. Steve, I believe the Cubs will win a World Series before they finish this. I have no comment on it. Listen, if they can't comment on it, I'm not commenting on it anymore. I think I've made every joke possible. Well, the ongoing that, which is, this joke is, is the investment. It is. A, it's become a it, right. Exactly. It's become a joke. So. All right, Steve. The other day, uh, saw the passing of Hall of Fame trainer Elliot Birch, a man you knew, 
Uh, fill us in on uh, Elliot Birch, if you would. Uh, yes, and bear with me on this because Elliot Birch was an exceptional, exceptional trainer. A lot of people, not, a lot of the younger generation don't remember him now. Uh, Birch basically trained privately for first Brookmead Stable, uh, Mrs. I Isabel, Isabel Dodge Sloan, and then Paul Mellon's Rokeby Stable. But he was the antithesis of today's trainer. He always went out of the box, always tried something different. In 1959, he ran Sword Dancer in the Met Mile in between the Preakness and the Belmont, which is not usually done. Mm. Okay, Sword Dancer won both races. In 1964, Quadrangle finished second in the Met Mile and won the Belmont Stakes. And in 1969, Arts and Letters won the Met Mile and the Belmont Stakes. And these, these are not like Conquistador Cielo who were winning the Met Mile and the Belmont Stakes. See, all three of these horses ran in all three Triple Crown races, and all three went on to win the Travers on top of that. I mean, that's a tremendous training accomplishment with those three horses. In 1972, he ran the three-year-old Key to the Mint in the Brooklyn Handicap, which was a big race back then, and the Whitney. And he won them both and went on to win the Travers. So this is what Elliot Birch was all about. He trained Fort Marcy to become the first pure turf horse to be named Horse of the Year. And he was named Horse of the Year as a six-year-old three years after he was champion turf horse before that. And what he did with fillies, too. I mean, he was never afraid to run fillies against the Colts. He ran Amerigo Lady, get this, <laughs> against Dr. Fager, Damascus, and in reality, in the Suburban Handicap. He ran, he ran Summer Guest against Key to the Mint and Reva Ridge in the Woodward, and she finished second and was disqualified for third. Listen, they don't make trainers like this anymore. He was one of a kind, and we really miss these kind of trainers. Just like I said, stepping out of the box and doing something different. He was a great, great trainer, and his type of trainer will certainly be missed. And, and it is missed. And Steve, the, the Met Mile and the Belmont were, were one week apart at that point. Is that correct? Yeah. 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 <laughs> most, 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 most years it was a week, it was a week apart. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and, and three times he did it, and all three times he won the Belmont That's Stakes. That's incredible. And two of the horses won the Met Mile and one finished second. Yeah. So uh, all you trainers who managed to get two starts into your horses uh, before they run in the Kentucky Derby. <laughs> yeah. The good old days, huh? Sure. All right. Well, as speaking promised, of the good old days, by the way, speaking of the good old days, by the way, I just want to let everybody know. I know you don't want me to say anything. I'm still in my living room, despite what you see behind me. So, thanks. This is the, this is the product of Stable Boy. I think he should get credit for this. Yeah. Well, we know you're in your living room because there's so much snow outside. You ain't going anywhere. <laughs> so, uh, but but yes, a professional new backdrop. Um, Always, always uh, improvements here at And They're Off, folks. Speaking of which, we have an exclusive Groundhog Day report now as we follow live our local Groundhog, Puxatawney Stable Boy. Let's go to the action. It's been a harsh winter for most of the country, so it is with no small amount of interest that we follow Puxatawney Stable Boy, shown here in his cave emerging from his winter hibernation. Like any responsible groundhog, he gathers his essentials for the climb up from his lair. Finally reaching the surface, he peeks out. Will he see his shadow? Oh, we'll never know as he's pelted with snowballs and crawls back in his hole without telling us how long winter will hang around. Well, we tried, folks. Uh, <laughs> we want to thank our viewers. We want to thank our sponsor, Darby Dan Farm. We'll be back at you in two weeks. That'll be February 16th. Steve, that will be our special Valentine's and President's Day edition of And They're Off, where we're going to have a Cupid shoot an arrow at Stable Boy while he's dressed as Abe Lincoln. So uh, don't miss that one. <laughs> Should have quit while you were ahead. <laughs> Steve, we'll see you then. Take care. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye, everybody.